It is my distinct honor today to be presiding over this prison cadets officer passing out parade. And today, we celebrate the end of a very rigorous training that has been successfully completed, despite, as has been said, the constraints arising from the COVID-19 containment measures. To each and every one of you, my hearty congratulations for your personal and collective achievements as the cohort that is graduating today. And let me also register my very deep appreciation to the trainers who have coached you, mentored you, and instructed you over the last 13 months of your training. Your tremendous effort has today borne bountiful returns. So ladies and gentlemen, the advent of the Constitution of Kenya 2010 ushered a new dawn for every aspect of our national life. And correctional services were part of this. This national covenant demanded dignity for all citizens. And in that regard, we continue to steer institutional reforms of the Kenya Prison Service to meet the visions set under our new supreme law. A key plank of these reforms has been to reposition the service from being a mere custodial institution to a correctional facility. Indeed, under the leadership of the State Department and Ministry, the service now places greater emphasis on rehabilitation and reintegration and the reduction of the tendencies of convicted criminals to reoffend. We are undertaking this solemn national duty so as to support those of our citizens who offend the law to realize the impact of their actions on society and to instill in them the need to be responsible and accountable in their choices and actions and to make positive changes for the future. Indeed, to anchor the ongoing reforms where philosophically the place of incarceration has transformed from being that which seeks retribution to one that seeks restoration, rehabilitation, and reintegration. And as such, new services and their attendant skills are required of this institution. These include risk assessment and counseling, which is why my administration has continuously provided support in recruiting specialists, professionals, indeed as is attested by the cadet officers who are passing out today. These cadets who are passing out today are the latest addition in our quest to foster the capacity of the service in discharge of its national duty as a key institution in the criminal justice system and in that regard I urge each and every one of you graduating today to honor with fidelity the ethos of the service in all that you do. Indeed, as a key player within our national criminal justice system, the Kenya Prison Service, success requires close collaboration with other players across the entire length of the criminal law process. And I note with satisfaction that the feedback that we have received from these players in the system has been unreservedly positive. And I commend, through you, Commissioner General, the service for building strong linkages across the criminal justice system. In keeping with the vision of a prison, serv of a prison service that directly contributes to social economic development of our country, I am also very happy that the service is indeed now making important contributions to the Big Four agenda, particularly in terms of food security and manufacturing. Currently, there are 1,400 of acres under commercial maize production and a maize processing plant with a capacity of 30 tons per day is under construction at Naivasha Prison. This maize plant will initially supply maize flour for inmate food and ration. Mwea rice farm is also being transformed 
into a model farm for rice production with its size now being increased to about 200 acres. Farm machinery for production has been acquired and a modern rice store and mill house has been constructed while the procurement of a modern rice mill is also ongoing. Plans are also underway to produce certified potato seed at Nyandarwa prisons. Livestock production has also not been left behind as part of this transformation by introducing pedigree dairy cattle at the Ngeria and Shukusha farms together with an impro improved Boran beef herd right next door at Kamete Prison Farm. Other areas of reform include tea production at Kericho and Uruku prisons, vegetable production at Embu and Roiro prisons, sunflower production at Kisumu and Kibos prisons, and hay farm, hay production in Geria and Shikusa farms. Currently also, you have a 13-acre tree nursery here at Roiro prison to support our move to 10% forest cover for our country. The prison industry is also continues to play a pivotal role in support of this Big Four agenda. Today, we have launched a water bottling brand here at Roiro. Government agencies and departments will also now be procuring their drinking water from the prison service, ensuring a lower cost and passing on this saving to our taxpayers. As part of this transformation, the prison workshops are also being revamped to modern workshops so as to continue training offenders in various industrial crafts and vocations, a critical aspect of rehabilitation and reintegration and the reduction of the tendency of convicted criminals to reoffend. The above are just a few examples that demonstrate that even though the offenders are within correctional facilities, they are not excluded from personal development and also can make valuable contributions to and achieving our shared aspirations. So ladies and gentlemen, even as we focus on securing the restoration and integration of offenders, the well-being of our officers, supporting them, has also been and remains a key area of focus for my administration. I am pleased to state that we have made significant progress in uplifting the benefits and standards of living of our officers and their dependents. We have revamped accommodation facilities introduced comprehensive health care and implemented continuous professional development that ensures that officers can upskill and improve themselves. This is in recognition of the fact that you are the frontline personnel who interact most with the offenders and therefore have the potential and ability to role model positive social behavior. To further enhance the medical and wellness infrastructure, supporting the personnel of the service who undoubtedly bear the burden of duty and sacrifice, today we will be launching the construction of the Kenya Prison Service Hospital, which I will be groundbreaking. And I direct that this should be finished and ready for operation on or before the end of quarter one 2022 to this end and we have just been talking with the minister we must ensure that the next intake of cadets should ensure that a provision is made for the recruitment of doctors nurses and other medical personnel to man this new hospital Ladies and gentlemen, we now return to a subject of the forgotten within the justice system. 
forgotten not because of their own acts or omission, but by being born in prison. That is the young children of imprisoned parents who are the silent, forgotten, hidden or invisible victims of the justice system. These children, especially those who accompany their mothers to prison, bear indelible scars born throughout the journey that their mothers must travel across the justice system towards and during incarceration. During this period of their development, children need stable, safe, secure, stimulating and nurturing environments to enable them to grow optimally and to achieve their developmental potential regardless of the crimes committed by their parents. A nurturing environment for young children accompanying mothers to prison as well as those who are left behind will go a long way in improving child outcomes and break the cycle of intergenerational incarceration. The government recognizes parental incarceration among the adverse childhood experiences that exasperate the child's risk of negative outcomes in adulthood. These outcomes include depression, criminal behavior, abuse of substances, domestic violence, mental health problems, and other health-related issues. In that regard, and in order to secure the welfare of all our children and the unlimited future we strive to enable them realize, I do direct that the Ministry of Interior and coordination of national government together with the Commission of Prisons and in consultation with all key stakeholders to immediately develop and issue a policy to safeguard the health and education of children of incarcerated parents in an integrated and systematic manner. I further direct the Ministry of Education to second education officers to the Kenya Prison Service so as to guide the education in these facilities. The policy should also encompass comprehensive capacity building of all actors along the chain of justice on child sensitive action, creating creation of nurturing environments for children who accompany their mothers to prison, including the establishment of a mother baby of mother and baby units within prisons expanding the use of alternatives to incarceration for petty offenses and making it less traumatic for children to be integrated back into society lastly as has been said i am also happy to note that the kenya prison service has attained a vaccination average of 90% for inmates and over 80% for uniformed personnel. This critical mass can sufficiently provide herd immunity within the Kenya Prison Service fraternity and is the basis upon which we will anchor the decision to review the moratorium on visitation of inmates imposed at the onset of COVID-19 pandemic. Visitation maintains links with families and societies for the purpose of reintegration. And I therefore direct, as a result of the vaccination progress that you have made, that this ban on vis visitation be lifted and people be allowed to visit their loved ones under strict guidelines. So ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by once again congratulating all the graduates today, thanking the service, the management of this institution, and all its personnel for the sterling work that they continue to do. To you officers, as you formally transition into the ranks of the service, the following three hallowed words should be your mantra from this day forward. That is duty, honor, and country. I wish each and every one of you 
all the best and I urge you to discharge your duties with integrity, dedication, diligence and a firm commitment to maintaining the high standards and excellent reputation that this service has built. Let me also say that for me it is also a personal wonderful day that I have been able to inspect a guard of honor led by a woman. Hiyo ni kitu mzuri sana. Hongera sana. Hongera sana. Hongera sana. God bless you na walinde mkiendelea na shughuli zenu mbalimbali kutoka siku ya leo. Asanteni sana. Thank you.